I've never been someone to appreciate horror games. They've always been on that fringe of what makes a video game enjoyable. And seeing as the AAA market has for the most part pulled out the genre, as usual, we have to rely on the indie scene. But too many of these games just have the exact same tropes. Jump scares every 15 seconds, spooky woman that looks like my ex-wife, and worst of all, furries. So many of these games have so much potential, but end up being the exact same experience over and over again. But what if I told you there was a horror game that was actually good? A horror game with substance and gameplay that actually engages you. Lost in Vivo is a game I discovered completely by accident, but I'm so happy that I did. I've just become completely entranced with this nightmare of an experience. It has an unfathomable... Wait, how do you... how do you say that word? <laughs> Ah, yes, of course. I've just become utterly entranced with this nightmare of an experience. It has this unfathomable ability to terrify me, but doesn't keep me feeling helpless throughout the entire experience. The premise is to find your lost dog after he gets washed up in the sewers. Most people would call it quits and buy a new dog. But because you're this absolute psychopath, what, me? You delve into the sewers after him. As you plunge deeper, you feel the environment warping and twisting around you, making you feel this intense isolation and claustrophobia. You question your insanity and if what you're witnessing is even real. It's like a fever dream on top of a fever dream, sandwiched with your worst possible nightmares. Finding your dog is the least of your worries as you try to comprehend these cosmic horrors that cannot be reasoned with. And then, barely alive, you stumble into a save room, and that calming melody starts playing. Now, it's astoundingly apparent the game takes inspiration from Silent Hill. Some of the environments begin with this industrial aesthetic, only to slowly transform around you into this organic mess, where the walls themselves are breathing and contorting. Enemies themselves look like they couldn't exist under any normal means. Shambling towards you, usually with a dark red color palette, like their skin has been flipped inside out, causing them constant intense pain. Inventories look incredibly similar, and there's a static noise whenever enemies are nearby, much like the radio from the Silent Hill games. When you save your game, the screen fades to red, exactly like in Silent Hill 3. You can even find a knife, surprisingly similar to the one Harry Mason finds from Silent Hill. The soundtrack has this razor-sharp tension, sounding like someone is playing a violin with a butcher's knife, making your head shake with a droning soundtrack as enemies approach with murderous intent. It takes notes from Silent Hill, but never to the point where it's straight up plagiarizing. Much like the excuse I make when a video gets claimed, the content is transformative in nature, uses no more of the original content than needed, and give me my money back. On a side note, shoutouts to UMG for claiming literally every single TikTok video I have ever made. I love you guys. And stuff that money in their greedy fucking pockets. Fuck you, UMG, suck my- You play as a purposely ambiguous character. Even the gun just floats midair like you're playing fucking time splitters. I like to imagine that you play as a depressed middle-aged man who has to travel into the depths of hell one last time to pay his ex-wife's alimony. You visit many different environments, abandoned mines, government labs where experiments have gone horribly wrong. A lot of them tried and tested horror tropes, but work here exceedingly well. For example, we've all seen spooky subways, but this game probably deals with it in the most unique way I've ever seen. Something about this train unnerves me. Can't be that bad. What? what's that noise? What? Oh, of course the train's alive. Of course, it does make sense. Much like in real life, you are completely alone and friendless in this game, and a lot of the time, you get this foreboding sense of crippling isolation, with the only respite being occasionally hearing your dog's distant barking, which pushes you just that little bit forward. And then the game realises you've had 0.3 seconds of not having a literal anxiety attack, and then proceeds to scare the shit out of you again. Just want to find my dog, man. Oh! Do doggy? Doggy! I'm so happy I fa- Oh, you don't- 
You don't look too well, buddy. Oh, what? What the fuck? The enemies are the real focus of Lost in Bevo. Each one crafted to toy with your psyche more than the last. Not relying on jump scares, but pure dread, as many of them can't be killed by conventional means. Only being able to stun them while you find a way out of the area. The game throws a boss enemy at you in each main area, with lesser ones peppered around to build you up to them. Some of them don't even deal damage. They're there just to kick you down mentally. What are you hoping to accomplish? Without me, you're just hollow. You're pathetic. You need fear to motivate you. Down in the description, there is a link that goes directly to subscribe to PewDiePie, and I recommend it. Some enemies are definitely less inspired than others, though. Giant roaches? What the hell? Like this guy, for example, who's pretty much a combination of the Weeping Angel and Patrick Star from SpongeBob. Seriously, this guy's a joke, man. I don't know why they designed such a... Okay. The game breaks the fourth wall a couple of times as well, giving you Unity asset errors and blue screens. This definitely isn't anything new, but it's done so abruptly. It puts a real spin onto the spooks just before they're about to get old. Debug. Debug. There we go. Now, Anton, you stay right there. Don't you dare move. I'm still looking. I'm still looking. Stupid fucking corpse just can't keep still for five minutes taking up my inventory. Oh, Anton again? Seriously? We we talked about this. The soundtrack has this amazing capacity to fit into any area you're in, either mesmerizing you or making you clench your pro gamer chair in absolute terror. The music can hammer into your skull with this rhythmic mesh that drowns out any thought or comprehension as to what instruments were being used, increasing in tempo and volume as you near the climax of the score. Seriously, why, why are you still here? Get out. You need to get out. You need to get out. The big spooky monsters are coming. This isn't a kid's game, man. You need to get the fuck out. Even areas with no enemies have this constant droning beating sound, never letting up, making you feel uncomfortable at every point, piquing your curiosity of what is exactly around the next corner. But it's all worth it when you transition to the next area and hear this calming yet rewarding track come on. The game is telling you, you are making progress. Now, remember when I said the game was scary? A lot of horror comes from its purposely outdated graphics. There's something really unsettling about this janky, basic rendering that it just unnerves me. It adds to a sense that I'm dwelling in a broken, savage, uncomplete world, uncomparable to my own. A world of which I can neither comprehend, nor I'm either welcoming. Maybe it calls on something that scared me as a child playing PS1 games, but... Jesus, it does a really good job at making me feel uncomfortable. Horror in media relies too much on jump scares. Yet, yeah, they startle you, they trigger a brief rush of adrenaline, but it's fleeting. Over and done with in just a snap. Just because I can get sporadically mugged while walking down the street, doesn't mean I'd call it a deep and engaging horror experience. No. That's just living in the UK. <laughs> Horror should leave a lasting effect that stays with you and build a scary, indomitable, indomitable, indomitable. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I agree with this wholeheartedly. Horror should leave a lasting effect that stays with you and build an indomitable sense of tension, dread, and awfulness. All the scary bad emotions that trigger an emotional high. Not a funny ha ha face that spooks you every five seconds. There's so many segments where I was walking down cramped corridors waiting for a jump scare because that's how my brain's been trained to deal with horror. But nothing happened. And that, in my opinion, is even more terrifying. But what's a horror game without good combat? Well, kind of crap, honestly. Horror should leave you feeling weak and defenseless, so combat should be bad enough to evoke that sense of defenselessness, but not so terrible where it's annoying and you hate the game. The game strikes a balance, yeah, pretty well-ish? Is that a word? Melee combat turns the game into a point and click adventure, where you press mouse one on the enemy until they don't move anymore. You can also block, which is usually pointless. Most enemies die in two to three strikes anyway. But the gunplay, that's where it's really at. This being a survival horror, ammo is scarce. But if you ration it outright, you'll have just enough ammo to get by in most situations. Sure, you can go a couple fights without using ammo. 
just like my children can go without a warm meal. But seriously, there's nothing more satisfying in this game than finding a fresh magazine to load back into your Ruger. This is the American dream. I also like how guns have their own quirks. Your pistol is really badly damaged and will randomly jam when firing, mainly due to the extreme social anxiety it suffers from. And the shotgun, like every nine-year-old with an Epic Games account, ejects spontaneous rounds of salt onto your foes. Knowing this was a game based around Silent Hill, many items can be clicked on to give a brief description. Just like Dark Souls. This is Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Dark Souls. 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 Thankfully, there's always a plentiful amount of notes to read to get more lore about the world. Here's the ramblings of a madman. Oh look, a letter about a secret off-limits project. And here's the letter my wife left me before she took the fucking kids. And if you're wondering, yes, I'm the asshole that reads all the books in Oblivion. Oh no, what do we do? I'm so scared. That being said, there is a lot of optional content. You can collect tapes which give you alternate scenarios. In this one, I had to build a wooden door before the creepers came in and blew up my entire house. But seriously, these are great. They put you in little microcosms totally detached from the main story. It's almost like looking into a window of what the game could have been in this weird alternate dimension. Hopefully in the DLC, they add the Fortnite and Rick and Morty expansion pack. Multiple endings can also be obtained. Rescuing your dog, condemning the entire planet to eternal suffering, and the ending where you wake up and realize you were an extra in Silent Hill. My favorite ending is the true ending, where you cap your fucking dog for daring to leave their master behind. You may call me a monster, but I have pet insurance. There's also New Game Plus, which spices up some enemy placement, while also letting you carry all your weapons and ammo over, so you'll never have to be afraid of Igor, the homeless crack addict, ever again. I think he's dead. It's great that this is a feature as a problem with horror games after playing them. You know where all the scares are. I've done about five runs of this game and even now it somehow finds new ways to scare me. Just gotta climb up. Okie dokie. He can't climb la- Oh my god, he can climb ladders! Oh my god! <laughs> Shotgun time. <laughs> nah, no, still with. I just gotta get the- What? Was that my wife? One thing that disappoints me about this game is how no one is talking about it. But if you like horror and the premise of a spiraling nightmare that keeps dragging you further in sounds promising, give Lost in Vivo a try. It doesn't reinvent the genre, but it got me back into appreciating horror. I give it a shotgun out of Homeless Man. Now, I was going to end the video here, but after doing some digging, I found a hidden game within Lost in Vivo. Lost in Vivo Midnight is an exclusive game mode available when you set your clock to midnight. Ah yes, midnight, the haunted hours, where the mentally insane come out of their brainlit caverns to scream at a mirror for YouTube revenue. D-Rose. What the fuck? Yo. The Midnight Game Mode is pretty freaking cool. It has this weird Castlevania aesthetic to it. And if you don't love vampire daddies, get the fuck off my video. You begin by collecting a sword and using said sword to game end enemies. You collect silver coins off their bodies to unlock a door, leading you to a final boss. I couldn't beat this boss because my block key wouldn't work. So I died like a little bitch. The only problem I had with this game mode was the guide arrow that doesn't take elevation into account. So it'd tell me that little Samuel the choir boy was straight through this wall when in fact he was 30,000 feet below sea level. This can be dealt with by ringing the holy bell that sends all enemies in the level to attack you at the same time. Ah yes, a fair and balanced duel. This is peak gaming. Overall, Lost in Vivo is amazing. It's apparent that this was a real passion project, and I've never seen more secrets packed into a game. Press any key to continue. Oh, what a terrible game. Zero out of ten. Just wanted to take a moment to thank Akuma Kira, the creator of Lost in Vivo. I got into contact with them on Twitter, and they were extremely helpful with me structuring this video. Also, if you like this video, I really can't recommend the YouTuber Shami enough. He's recently released an analysis on hero shooters like Paladins, Overwatch, and Minecraft story mode, so check that out and suck my little nuts. Depending on how this video does, I'd like to make some more game reviews. It'd be nice to try something new, but... Of course, it's not TikTok Reaction 549, so I'm not sure how the algorithm will take it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and please, stop trying to contact